What's up? How's it going, guys? Welcome to Dave's Watch Channel, and finally, something interesting happened in the watch world, and I think it's kind of, I guess you could say, it's going viral. And you know, it's Omega. Omega has finally, you know, has finally done something positive for a change. You know, um, in case you've been, uh, in case this is news for you, they brought back the Caliber three two one right here the moon watch and you know they picked the Ed White and I feel that I'm quite um, you know I'm entitled to an opinion because I have owned the Ed White itself the original 105.003 mine was uh, 65 right made in 1965 it was an Ed White I absolutely loved that watch it was my favorite Omega Speedmaster of all time unfortunately I sold it I sold it simply because you know I was paring down my collection and I only wanted to keep one chronograph and I decided on the Rolex Daytona but it was such a great watch right I really really love the size and proportions of the Ed White Speedmaster so you know let's just take a look at it right the dial right it has the full patina full tina um, it's it's nice you know it really looks good um, does it look like the original one it looks a little bit more angular at the uh, at the lugs right I think the the original was a lot uh, the original one did not have any beveling if I'm if I'm not wrong it was just a smooth polished lugs uh, pusher is the same you know not much difference I guess dot over 90 uh, of course the chrono hand right it's the same every it's uh, basically identical except of of course you know this has luminova it will glow at night I'm assuming I'm pretty sure it will and uh, I guess what's better in the modern one compared to the old vintage one is the bracelet right you have a modern bracelet it's tight the older, I, th I believe it was the 1039 bracelets, man, those things were like, ah, uh, those things would just fall apart. Even if you found a good, uh, good clean example, those things stretch out and it was just really flimsy. It just looked better on the, on the leather strap anyway. So the other main difference, right, is obviously here, right, looking at the, the case bag, it's an exhibition case bag. Now, I'm not sure if it's uh, plexiglass or sapphire uh, I don't know if it says let's take a look specifications uh, let's see watch details maybe that will enlighten us steel on steel okay description crystal scrap okay sapphire so it's a sapphire front and I believe I guess it's a sapphire sandwich, All right? Is this a yeah? Okay, it's a sapphire sandwich. And um, okay, let's <laughs> let's review the price. What does it say? Seventeen thousand six hundred dollars Canadian. Seventeen six. That's a that's a steep price to pay. All right, we'll talk about that later. I mean, let's take a look at the movement, right? Beautiful caliber three two one column wheel chronograph. You know what I really love about this is that it's not a limited edition. It doesn't say one out of ten thousand. You know, it's just a Speedmaster caliber three two one. I don't know if they that's uh, what do they call it? They just call it a Speedmaster. Uh, whatever. Anyway, it's the Ed White, and it's a beautiful, beautiful movement, right? Um, Breguet Balance Spring 18K Sentinel Gold PVD Coated Finish. That's really cool, you know. It's a it's it's a beautiful watch, steel on steel. The Ed White, the Ed White is my favorite one, right? Pre Moon, there's no professional. The, I think the proportions were just so great, fantastic, so smooth, so smooth to wind. It really was my favorite Speedmaster. You know, uh, how do I feel about the exhibition case? Um, I think it's good. You know, you got a Caliber three two one. I think they pretty much had to. You know, they bring back this this iconic movement. You got to showcase it. You know, you got and it's a beautiful movement. It's a really cool movement. Um, 
it's it's great, you know. I'm really happy that they brought it back. There's no, you know, there's no limited edition, no one out of a million. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a Speedmaster, right? That one should be really proud to own. You know, it's a great watch, right? It's a fantastic watch. It was this, the Ed White was my favorite favorite. Favorite Speedmaster. Unfortunately, I sold it because I just don't do well with vintage watches. You know, I, I live in a very wet climate. There's a lot of rain. And there was one time I was riding my bike and I had the Ed White on me. It just I just got caught in the rain and, and water went into it. There was moisture damage. And the, <laughs> the loom on the chrono hand flicked off, right? So... That was when I knew that, okay, vintage is not really for me. I ended up selling that watch. I made a good, you know, I made I made a nice profit on that watch, you know. At the time, I only paid about 3,500 Canadian. I sold it for 10, right? And it was it was a really great um, investment, I guess, although I didn't buy, buy the watch to invest in it. You know, I just bought it because I loved it. I wanted a 3 to one movement. I wanted a straight lugs case. No crown guards, a beautiful watch, and hmm, you know it's a, it's great because now you have the, the modern incarnation, the seals are tighter, the you know I, I would assume it's a little bit more robust as well. The bracelet is solid, it's modern. This thing, this thing is built to last, right? It's a, definitely a lot more durable and um, it's more durable than the vintage versions. And it's a great watch, right? The only thing I don't like, right, is obviously the price. $17,600. HST and GST not included. Oh my god, so plus tax, you know, what's that, 12%? You're looking at a cool $19,000, $20,000 Canadian? Oh my god, that's just too much for the Speedmaster, right? As much as I love it. It's just way too expensive. I guess Omega was pricing it based on uh, the the market value for the actual vintage three two one uh, speedies uh, and the Ed White speedies, but it's just a little bit too high. You know, Omega's a business, Swatch is a business. I understand they got to make money, but I I think they will be they will be hard pressed to to sell many of these at this price right it's tough because you know you're paying 20,000 Canadian you just put in maybe another three or five thousand dollars you can buy a you can buy a Daytona you can buy the 116520 right the the previous generation Daytona and so this is just way too expensive um, I I love that they've came, that they've come up with this watch, but I just don't see anybody picking this over a Daytona, picking this over, you know, some other more prestigious, uh, pre prestigious watches. Because you you've really entered into, you know, high horology, right? You could get an overseas, a Vacheron overseas. You could get, or right, a Patek Calatrava, uh, for, at this price point. 20 grand is a lot of money, right? And uh, do I think it will succeed? Um, I, I don't know, only time will tell, right? Would I buy one? No, probably not. It's just way too, it's just way too expensive. And, um, you know, what's a good price? I, I think, I think if they, I think people would pay 10,000 for this in a heartbeat, no problem. They won't ask any questions. They would buy, they will just buy this ten thousand, boom, right? I would pay ten thousand for this watch, right? Definitely, I would pay ten thousand. Right? I would not pay twenty thousand, but I guess that's just me, you know. Um, but but yeah, yeah tell tell me what you guys think. You know, it's exciting stuff. I'm really happy that Omega brought out the three, the caliber three two one movement. It's back in action, right? It's back in production, and I really hope it will stay. And maybe prices will come down um, in the future, and you know we'll all be sporting the Omega Speedmaster. Right. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm out. Bye.